How many times have you been in lecture halls like this one? All right, maybe this reminds you of some of your college classes, or if you're a little younger, then this is what you have to look forward to when you get to college. Right? Hundreds of people packed into one room, listening to one person give a lecture. And in this case, that's me. Have you ever been bored or confused during a lecture? What do you do when you're confused during a lecture? You kind of sit there quietly, looking around, hoping that somebody else is just as confused as you are, and you might slowly raise your hand to ask a question, and then you'll stop and you'll realize, man, this is a stupid question. And if I ask this question, I'm not wasting my own time, I'm wasting everybody else's time. So you'll pull your hand back down, and you'll focus again on the lecture, and you'll realize at that point that you are completely lost. <laughs> right? Have you ever had that experience? I know I have too. So if you really want to learn something, lectures are a really, really inefficient way to learn it. And there's research to back that up. So here's Benjamin Bloom, and he was an educational researcher. And back in the 80s, he found that uh, compared to other students, students who learn in lectures uh, actually do two standard deviations worse than students who get individual personalized attention, okay? So if you get a private tutor, that's basically saying you'll go from being a C student to an A student. That's huge. So what should we do? So one approach might be to tell every professor out there, you need to spend a couple of hours with each student one-on-one -on -one and do that for your whole class. And, and professors just don't have the time to do that, right? Uh, another approach might be to get a private tutor for every student out there. And that costs a lot of money, right? Personalized instruction is really expensive, both in terms of time and money. But lectures are scalable. If you can give a lecture to one person, then you can give a lecture to 100 or 1,000 or as many people as you can fit into that room. And you can stream it online for no extra cost, right? We give lectures because on a per-student basis, they are so cheap and they take so much less time than personalized instruction. So I'm going to move ahead from the 80s and the work of Benjamin Bloom to close to present day, 2012, when the New York Times declared the year the year of the MOOC. What's a MOOC? Sound, sounds kind of funny, right? MOOC. It stands for Massive Open Online Course. Harvard, MIT, Stanford, Berkeley, all the top institutions out there give online courses to millions of students around the world for free. These are MOOCs. So you can go online and you can take a course with 100,000 students around the world simultaneously. That sounds great, right? But if you remember how little attention you got in that lecture hall with 100 other students, and you divide that by 1,000, then that's how much personal attention you get in an online MOOC with 100,000 other students. MOOCs are lecture-based, okay? Because lectures are what scale. And so it shouldn't be a surprise to you that as of still today, more than 90% of students who will start a MOOC will drop out. So over the last few years, I've been asking myself a question. And we use all this great technology for MOOCs. We use high-speed internet connections, cloud computing, cheap data storage. We need all these technologies to scale up lectures so we can give them to millions of students. And my question is this. Can we leverage these same technologies to scale up not lectures, but personalized instruction, one-on-one -on -one tutoring? And then maybe instead of having 90% of students dropping out, we could have 90% of students completing the courses that they sign up for. That would be something awesome, right? So what are the barriers to scaling up personalized instruction? So what I like to do sometimes is imagine you're a tutor and you have the students sitting next to you. What do you do? Do you give the student a 10-minute speech about how to solve the next part of their homework? No. 
That's really bad tutoring. You would never do that, right? What do you do? You talk to the student. You have a conversation. You ask questions like, what are you up to in class? What, what are you struggling with? What's giving you the most trouble? This problem here, what approach would you take to solve that problem? Right? Lectures are one-way communication from teacher to student, while tutoring, personalized instruction, is a two-way conversation. You have to listen to your students. And that's why they're so hard to scale. That's why tutoring is hard to scale, because students can and will say just about anything. Right? I used to teach introductory physics at Harvard, some of the brightest students in the world. And one of the first lessons in that class is, you throw a ball in the air, at what angle should you throw it so it goes as far as possible? Right? So most of the students say 45 degrees, some say 60, some say 24.7. Uh, we had one student who said you should throw it straight up. Right? And then he thought about it a little bit, and he, he changed his answer later on. <laughs> right? So that's the challenge. How can you build software that gives intelligent, useful feedback to students who are giving you so many different answers? That's the challenge. That's why you can't scale personalized instruction. So my team and I, we were up to that task, and we think we found the best way to do it, the best way to scale personalized learning. So here's a, a, one of our lessons. We made a couple of lessons online. This is an early one on quadrilaterals. And uh, quadrilaterals are shapes with four straight sides. Okay. And we ask the students, after we give them that definition, we say, how many of these shapes here are quadrilaterals? Can you find them? And only 44% of students are able to do it, which means 56% got this question wrong, right? That's a lot of wrong answers. So we, we looked at the data. We tried to see what's going on. And there were really obvious trends. There were patterns. They weren't actually confused about what quadrilaterals were. They just might have missed them. 85% answered it wrong this way. They found the two on the bottom, and they missed the one in the upper left. So if you were a tutor, how would you approach this? Right? You would give specific feedback to these students. So we went in, and we said, we're, we're changing the lesson. We're not just going through this linear structure anymore where we define all the shapes. We're going to intervene here, and we're going to talk to these students personally. And what we did was we said, great. So any student who got that question wrong that way, we said, great. You found two quadrilaterals. Now count the sides carefully, and, and maybe you can find one more. And 94% got that right and continued right back on where they were in the lesson. So over the, the last few months, we've actually gotten a lot of practice building lessons starting out with some raw material, and then refining them and continuing to evolve the lesson, looking for what students were doing, looking for patterns in the data, and constantly improving the lessons. Okay, So we built a platform that let us do this quicker and easier. And if you're a teacher or a tutor or a professor, this is how you're going to make online lessons in the not-too-distant future. You're going to start off with something that's familiar to you. It's a linear sequence of video and question, and video and question for your online lessons, okay? You'll start off like that, but then you'll start collecting student data, and this data will be presented to you in a meaningful way. You'll see the problem areas, the, the red and the yellow boxes here. These are areas where students are getting questions wrong, it's where they're dropping out of the lesson, it's where they're confused, and you'll be able to go in with surgical precision and make some changes. And you might phrase a question a little differently. You might give a better example, right? You might add new branches to the lesson. If you find that a lot of students are making the same mistake, you'll prioritize those regions, and you will add new branches so that students who make that mistake will get personalized feedback specific to them. And after a few iterations of this, after several weeks, you'll wind up with something that's incredible. And some students, they'll just go right through. No problem. But most of the students will follow their own path. They'll explore prerequisites. They'll get specific feedback that's personalized to the, decision that, the decisions that they made in the lesson. And we live in an age now of smartphones and smartwatches. And as you saw in the last talk, smart everything around the home. But this is smart teaching. 
This is using student data intelligently, wisely, okay, and, and in an actionable way to make lessons better and to improve student outcomes. So we actually have a couple hundred lessons now, and we started out at a 30% completion rate. And over the last seven months, what we've done is we've continued to make these tweaks, these changes to every lesson, adding new branches, adding new feedback for different students. And over the course of just seven months, we now have a 70% completion rate for these lessons. This is going from lectures to personalized instruction. That's the kind of difference we're seeing. One more graph for you. MOOCs, there's research on MOOCs showing that students have an attention span of about four minutes. So if your video lecture is more than four minutes, forget it, your students stopped paying attention a couple of minutes ago. We did the same analysis with these lessons as we're evolving them, as there, as there are more branches and more paths for different students. And we found that we got a threefold improvement. Students stuck around for 12 minutes. And this isn't the end of the story. The story is ongoing. We're still changing all of our lessons. We're still pushing this curve up and to the right. We're getting higher completion and better efficacy all the time because we're constantly looking at the data and making changes. So to, to summarize, this is a, an unprecedented time in history right now where we have the potential and we're on the cusp of giving the entire world a great education through online learning. But what we're going to see over the next few years is a major shift, a major improvement. And not only will it be possible to deliver lectures to anyone anywhere around the world, but through constant iteration and improvement, we'll be able to provide personalized instruction to anyone, anywhere. And that's how we'll have a future where it's not just possible to lecture a billion students, but it'll be possible to privately tutor a billion students. Thank you. Wow.